What's up guys, Colin here. Obviously I'm in Berlin for the Star Ladder Major and you know what, it's been an incredible competition so far, but one of the highlights of this whole trip was getting to speak and sit down with G2's own Ocelot, the founder of that esports orc at G2's headquarters here in Berlin. Now we talked about a lot of incredible shit, G2 Esports CSGO team, the future of esports, and how far is too far when it comes to G2's dank social media memes, but Obviously, when I was at the headquarters, I forgot to record a fucking intro. So that's what this is. Hope you enjoy. We're here in Berlin. There's a reason that I'm here, and that's the uh, Star Ladder Major. Unfortunately, G2 is not gonna participate in that top eight, but they did do really well. They made a nice run of it, and they almost made it. How are you feeling about the CSGO team right now? It feels bad from the point of view of the expectation from everybody, the players ourselves, the fans. But I don't know, with, with majors, man, G2 is like, I think majors is like where we underperform the most. And it's like in the last six, seven, eight majors in G2, it's always been like two, three, or like some fucked up result like that. On the other hand, I'm actually, I can't be prouder of the work of the team. We've seen them work here in the office. Malik is doing an insane job, like he, you know, structuring processes and adding organization to, um, to an otherwise somewhat chaotic meta. And, and I, I do enjoy watching a lot of Counter-Strike these days as a result. But, but you know, it, which means also that you gotta hit heads, you know? If, if you wanna qualify to these things, you gotta be on point on, that, on the D-Day. And that's, I think, when, what didn't happen. Tell me honestly, tell me bluntly, with teams like Astralis, Team Liquid, with players like Zaiwu and Simple running around mm -hmm. out there, is this G2 a number one team? I think our current setup and lineup, uh, everything can happen, you can be number one, but I don't think realistically we can be number one. I, don't, I generally don't believe so. Mm. We have players that have been legends in the past, we have players that can be legends in the future. When I look at Amanek, people don't understand how smart this guy is about the game and how much he plays. And when I look at Jax, Jax is 25, I think he's 25, right? He has the biggest balls I've seen a player have, like he's entry fragging as if he was entry fragging for the last 15 years in the top five teams. Like, I always have a saying, yeah. which is that you recognize a good player mm. by crunch time, you know? Yeah. When crunch time comes, you recognize whether a player is good or not. And when crunch time comes, he's a fucking beast. I think that we do have potential stars of the future, and I do see Jax as that potential guy. Mm. The way he comes across, you know, he's super open, and then fucking goes around dancing, and it's like, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a guy that you can clearly see doesn't give a fuck. He just wants to have fun and, you know, make it big, and, and that's the kind of player that can make it big. I think you give these two players time, they can be the stars of the future. Kenny, uh, that shows signs of Titan times. The inconsistency is there, indeed, but the work ethic he's been putting through in the last couple of months, three months, and the love for the game that he's regained as a result of, you know, Amanek coming in and as a result of just seeing the game with different eyes yeah. again, yeah. you know, has revitalized his love for the game. And Shox is always a staple, you know. Would I expect Shox to be the number one player in the world tomorrow? I can't tell if it's possible, but maybe not because he's just, you know, he's been playing the game for a long, long time. It may be true that uh, when it comes down to crosshair placement, aim tracking, stuff like that, the new guys will eventually take over. They'll out-aim them. Yeah. yeah, of course. The likes of Simple, the likes of Siwu, that I just, you know, they just love the game so much and play the game so much. He fakes the bomb a single time and he's got the right hand in! Yes! In the pistol round and Siwu! They just hit heads all the time and more and more of those will keep coming. There's, there's so many of these guys that are just, are just hangry to hit heads and they just will always hit better heads than, than, than the older guys. Yeah, yeah, but the older guys bring something different too, right? Exactly, and, and that's the beauty of Counter-Strike. You can have both and you should have both. I mean, it's good to hear because obviously, uh, as a Counter Strike fan, you know we adore uh, the likes of Kenny S and Shocks. You know, we we love them no matter what, and we want to see them succeed. But I just want to move move away from uh, CS a little bit because my favorite thing about G2 has nothing to do with how successful you are in CS or Siege or League or anything. Yeah, in CS, like in CS, don't say like competitive successful. We're not competitive successful, as per our standards at least. Fa right? That's fair enough, you're not, you're not meeting your standards. Yeah, okay, okay. but every other game, I mean, yes. Like, but I, what, I do, what I do love about you guys is your personality as an org and your vibe and, and how that comes across, uh, especially on social media, because that's obviously how, like that's how, <laughs> Uh, the personality of an org, if there is such a thing, and I think that there is, 
can reach people. You guys are fucking savage gamers. <laughs> like it's every day I wake up and I see some shit and I'm just like, dude, like you're gonna make somebody cry with that. Like that's <laughs> that's crazy. When did you just when did you decide like oh G2 we're, we're gonna be dank as fuck like that's gonna be yeah like, so um, we actually made a brand exercise um, some time ago like a year and a half ago and I remember uh, walking people through what I believe should be our character since forever I always treated my job when I, when I was a player as if I was a gladiator and at the same time as if I was a, a musician or a performer more than a football player, you know? I'm competitive, but I'm more entertaining than competitive. But I'm very competitive, insanely competitive. But very, yeah, I think I'm more entertaining, you know? I always look to get that smile or get that goosebump yeah. from people, you know? And, and so eventually we came to the conclusion that we wanted G2 to be a character, you know? Mm. When you look at the Samurai, yep. you have to know what the Samurai stands for. And there's no other brand in esports that you can say that about. Maybe 100 Thieves, you're like, hey, yo, dope, you know, you can <laughs> listen to the music and, you know, you just... I just imagine the 100 Thieves guys just walking around the street listening to Drake and you... Oh my God. From the hood, you know? I, I get that, you know, I get that. It's a, it's a consistent brand attribute. For us, the way I envision our samurai, he's just walking, cocky as fuck. But he's a nice guy, he has the heart in a nice place, you know. He's walking around saying, how's it going? Yo, how's it going? All the, all the ladies are turning their heads and the boys are turning their heads. We look like we smell good. We have fun, always have something positive and fun to say. Pizza time. We go out and party and have fun partying. That character is a winner. You know, he's always there in crunch time. Like if, if Godzilla comes to kill the city, he'll appear and he'll fuck Godzilla up, okay. you know? And he will do it while having fun. Okay. And at the same time, he will meet his anti-hero. Yeah. And he doesn't hate him, but he'll make fun of him. Okay. And then he'll beat the shit out of him. And he will do it while smiling and having fun. So that's our character. And, and that's how we try to come across as. Every single post, every single video, every single, everything we do, we try to represent that samurai and the G2 army, which represents all the samurais in one. And I am in your dojo right now, and that's pretty cool. Um, the reason that this personality that you're talking about is so interesting is that until a few years ago, every esports org was so serious. Yeah. They just had to yeah, pretend. Yeah, they played better. Oh my God, they're better players. And yeah, it, well, yeah. They I, I, the fucking jer same jerseys everywhere. I, I wish, I wish, you know, I wish you to follow me and 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 hope I have good games. And that was the most we yeah. ever got. And then one day, you thank know, you for your support. We are devastated. Uh, oh my God. Uh, yeah, we just got into this game. Please give them a follow. And yeah. like, what the fuck is that, man? I... And then one and one day, Doublelift does something like, oh, everyone else is trash, or he throws a jersey in the <gasps> garbage, which is not, it's, it's honestly not that big of a, of a deal, right? But people flip out. Yeah. You know, and you guys come along, and you're not the only ones doing it, obviously, but you're, you're a legacy esports or you've been around for a while, and you guys come along and you're just like, fuck that shit. Yeah, fuck that shit. I mean, if you look at our office, we try to have as much fun as possible. When you see, what you see on Twitter, is what you see between our interactions. We tell each other to fuck off with, while smiling. It's, yeah. it's a very open, have fun type of culture, and I think that's why we thrive. While at the, while at the same time, if things go wrong, yeah. we hold ourselves to the highest possible standards. So if one of our videos is a seven out of 10, we make a meeting with 12 people in the office, with 12 people from the content team to discuss why that content piece was an, a 10 out of 10. Now let, let me ask you, what, what is actually a seven out of 10 video versus 10 out of 10? Is it, do you? Well, what I always say <laughs> is, <laughs> okay, <laughs> our seven out of 10 is a 10 out of 10 for Fnatic. Ooh. That's, that's, you Ooh. know. <laughs> okay. Uh, a seven out of 10 for us is 10 out of 10 for Liquid. We have to be a nine out of 10 minimum. Yeah. Bare, bare minimum for you two. Now we're talking about content, right? In 2019, I feel like an esports org is more of a content house, or at least that's one way to go. We look at like the, some of the orgs, other orgs that people are buzzing about, right? 100 Thieves, obviously FaZe Clan, they're doing vlogs, they're turning out mm -hmm. content. Yep. And you guys have that personality, but you are so firmly rooted in competitive yeah. esports. Can you talk to me about just the balance of G2 in terms of competitive and, and content and where you see you guys going in the future. So competition is a tool for us to entertain. Mm. And if we win, we know we can entertain better than if we lose. At the end of the day, everything boils down to entertaining. We may not always have the best teams in the world in every game, 
but we will always be up there in the top, you know? Yeah, yeah. And we will win tournaments here and there all the time. That's going to be the case for the next decades. The beauty of this is that many teams are very different, you know? Like you have the, the lifestyle type of brand that is harder things, right? Yeah. It's more like, and I'm going to over-exaggerate things just yeah. for the purpose of uh, conversation. But it's like more like the Adidas or stuff like that, right? Whereas we are more like the Disney. And then there is Fnatic, for example. It's a very product-heavy uh, company. So Fnatic would be more like Microsoft with some, you know, lifestyle brand attributes. Then there's Team Liquid, a lot of service, you know. Team Liquid, you know, the service business, a lot of agency work. Uh, so these companies are all very different from each other, you know, and I like that. Yeah. And what I, we have taken this niche. We are an entertainment company, and we look at our job as, you know, we should be on Netflix with a couple of shows. We have the Making the Squad show that is a, is like an X Factor type of show, like a talent show. We think about entertaining at large, and and not just a competition. Face Clan and Hundred Thieves, which are more like lifestyle. It's you know, they're. Founders are so large, yeah. in, uh, you know, as creators, yeah. that they can just do it like this with the camera, you know, yeah. speak for half an hour, yeah. and that's gonna get them 800,000 clicks, you know, yeah. uh, views. And Is, isn't that isn't that like the way to go though? Because like, okay, I don't think there's a single way to go. I there's think no Fnatic, go. Fnatic will succeed okay. with their product stuff. Team Liquid will succeed with their agency business. Yeah. G2 will succeed with their uh, entertainment kind of approach, and Hundred Thieves will succeed with their you know thinking about lifestyle and thinking about apparel type of thing you know? yeah okay i think all of us have our space our place you know i'm very concerned and i have been from the beginning about the model that utilizes geolocation right you oh yeah a city, I, by the way i think that's fuck? absolute like that's trash and I, I i speak with every single publisher out there and i always tell them listen yeah. the worst thing you can do is geolocate this is not fucking baseball you grow up in in new york and then you're grandfather brings you to the Yankees game and then you have this emotional attachment to a physical location yes. that you grow up with. Even if you move to a different state, you grow up being a Yankees fan because your grandfather brought you there. Here, it's, fuck it's not like that. Like, I never left Spain when I was 14 years old and my biggest idol was Spawn, Mohamed Spawn, right? From okay. SK Gaming. And he was playing in a Danish tournament with a Swedish team in a German organization. And I was watching online from Spain. And that was my idol, right? So things don't work like that anymore. I don't, I don't care whether the team that wins is Spanish. Yeah. I really can't care less. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a uh, they will call me globalist. I'm a citizen of the world, you know? And I think the world is moving towards that direction. Yeah. I think fucking geolocating is putting artificial walls where there should be none. It's like you're limiting my growth. I'm a global brand. We have fans from China, Taiwan, Vietnam, uh, North America, you know, both Canada and the US, yeah. South America, Spain, Africa, literally everywhere in the world. And you want a, me to be called the Madrid Bears? Fuck exactly. off! Exactly. Why, why would you partition all of those fans out? Why would you say, oh, you, well, you can be fans of us, but you're not a real fan because, you know, we're the it's, Madrid it's, Bears it's, or whatever. It's, it's not, honestly, I, I can be wrong, yeah. but, I, but I am very vocal and very assertive when I have a very clear opinion. Yeah. And, and that's what I believe. It's, it's interesting because, you know, when I asked that question, obviously my mind was pointed towards Blizzard properties, right? As you were talking, I remember I did all these interviews before um, LCS and L LEC yeah. franchise, and a lot, of the, a lot of the owners and stuff told me similar ideas. Like, well, I asked, you know, well, how are you gonna, how's you, how are you gonna position your, your brand? How are you gonna get fans? Like, you're new to this or you're rebranding. Mm -hmm. They said, well, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be the British team, or we're gonna be Listen, the German you know, team. And if I, you hear that, Automatically, I can picture you what kind of person that is. Typically, they're American and they're like this NFL style, you know. And 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 chances are they've worked for one of these companies before. Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, so same rules apply. It's competition. People play against people. Well, there you go. Sports. It makes sense to me. Well, it doesn't. You know, it really doesn't. Like, pe oh. like people don't care. Like, if the state of Virginia having a team. <laughs> People care less and less about that. There will be some people that care. But yeah. People care less and less about that. You want to be the future or you want to be the past? Yeah. That's the question I would ask myself to these publishers. If you want to be the, the future, think creatively about ways to make this a global sport yeah. and to reach people from all across the world. Yeah, maybe you can, you can geolocate languages. The LEC is doing that perfectly. Mm. Um, you can do all of that stuff. You can still invest money on catering for those people that want to hear the shoutcasting in the regional commentary, but don't put those artificial walls 
that should not exist. Yeah. But anyway, thank you very much for, for, the, for the interview. I hope you have a good weekend in, um, you know, spending time with the teams there. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. It's a pleasure. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Oh, wait, wait. You have not finished the video, no? Yeah, Still recording. Yeah. G2esports.com slash shop. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.